not. Only I thought I'd like another cup. I'll run and get some. Don't worry, dear. I'll go. Oh, don't get up, Auntie Sill. It won't take a minute. I always knew it, you know. Always knew what? That there wouldn't be a war. Well, I thought there would, I must say. Otherwise, I shouldn't have sent Sheila and Joan down to Mrs. Marsh and Dorset. I know you were, dear. Your mother was worried too about Queenie and little Frankie. But I wasn't. Neither was Mrs. Wilmot. Fancy that now. Mrs. Wilmot laughed outright, you know, when the woman came to try on her gas mask. Take that silly thing away, she said. Just like that. The woman was furious. I'm not surprised. It's funny how cross people can get when you refuse to believe in evil. It's rather difficult not to believe in evil, Auntie Sill, when you think of what's going on in different parts of the world just now. If enough people believed in good, none of it would happen. Yeah, but they don't, do they? You remind me of your father sometimes, Vi. You're material-minded. I can't help that, can I? Well, if you don't mind me saying so, I think you can. As far as I can see, bats are bats, Auntie Sill. And if looking at it that way makes me material-minded, well, then that's what I shall go on being. You don't understand what I mean, dear. No, I don't. To begin with, what you call facts may not be facts at all. Well, what is it, then? Illusion and error. Is an error a fact, then? Of course it is, in a way. That's just the trouble, you see. If you admit it's a fact, and regard it as a fact, well, that makes it more of a fact than ever. I shouldn't have thought it made much difference one way or the other. But it does. And what you're trying to say is, when Sheila had toothache the other day, I ought to have told her that she hadn't. I don't mean any such thing. Well, what do you mean, then? I mean that if she'd been brought up to believe that pain was evil, and that evil doesn't exist, well, then she wouldn't have had to fake in the first place. But she'd broken it on a bit of toffee and the nerve was exposed. Nonsense. It's not nonsense, Auntie Sill. It's true. I wish Mrs Wilmot was here. I'm sure I'm glad she isn't. It shows a very small mind to talk like that, Vi. You should be ashamed. Mrs Wilmot is a remarkable woman. Sounds a bit silly to me. We will not discuss the matter any further. All right, then. Your very life has been saved this moment by the triumph of right thinking over wrong thinking. Well, that's nice, isn't it? I've often thought that Mr Chamberlain must be a Christian scientist at art. Oh, well, let's hope that Hitler and Mussolini are one, too, and then we shall all be on velvet. What are you two looking so glum about? We were just talking about Mr Chamberlain. Auntie Sill says she thinks he must be a Christian scientist. Might explain a lot. What do you go and say that for, Vi? You're a very aggravating girl. Sorry. Just because you haven't any faith in anything yourself, you think it's all right to laugh at people who have. I wasn't laughing at all. Don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Don't put your daughter on the stage.